will not publicly release the schematics to those phones. Um, not yet. Um, we're working on it. However, what we do is uh, you will get the full um, GPIO assignment of, of, uh, of what each and every GPIO does. Any kind of external connectors, such as the debug board, the pin layout is, is uh, publicly known. Any other questions you have about the hardware, the current is not the hardware, the inside of the hardware, we are happy to answer that question. Um, the GPS in the first, that's an, another part. In this current developer version of the, the phone, the GPS is a, um, what's called a soft GPS. So the actual GPS code runs um, on the host system, on the time, like the host, like the, the application process the system on the device. Um, this is getting fixed for the GPS for the future. So the problem with this soft GPS is that um, all the, I mean, you can, you can get access to the, to the sat satellite data, you get the picture from the satellite, but all the positioning calculations are always happening in software. And that software is proprietary from the vendor. And that's often something that neither the community nor the community like. Um, however, for the end of Earth, we didn't have much of a choice. Um, and uh, the, but this is never, this, this is never going to sell beyond the, those developer models that we sell. Over. So the test is never going mass production. It will never be uh, available in use one. Um, so what we're working on right now is the second revision of it. It's called GPA02. It has a 2D, 3D acceleration. Um, it has uh, 3D uh, accelerators. Um, it has um, a 400 megahertz rather than 66 megahertz CPU, and it has a different GPS, um, which is self-contained and which is just like any other GPS. You have serial numbers and you get NDR data out of the serial numbers. Um, uh, that's basically the problem with it. But on any other side, like all the kernel drivers that we have, um, anything that is inside the Linux kernel, anything that is inside the bootloader is entirely GPL license and then, uh, free software. So um, all the drivers for, for a graphic, even for the 2D, 3D graphics that we add on next to all of this, it's entirely free software, entirely GPL license. No strings of that. Um, also, all the applications and software that we write and the framework level software that we do um, is uh, entirely uh, free software. Um, we, like the software that we write ourselves is either GPL or LGPL license and uh, if we base on existing software or we, we add uh, things or modify existing software, we always follow the license on the video. That's the respective project have. So, um, we don't do any development of proprietary software on, on, on our devices. It's all free software. Um, and as I said, even on the hardware level, we try to be as open as possible. We actually have a general policy for all the components we choose. Either the data sheet and documentation has to be publicly available, or um, GPL as its drivers has to be publicly available. If there's some kind of component where we cannot fulfill either of those two conditions, we can in our hardware. Um, so we spend a lot of time talking to our hardware vendors, chipset vendors, CPU vendors, and so on, um, explaining to them um, our criteria and, and making sure that uh, whatever we put in there um, uh, will not compromise on the level of openness. And um, that's basically also, like, we can compromise on performance, we can compromise on cost, we can compromise on about anything, but we cannot compromise on the level of freedom that the product has. And uh, this is something that I think uh, distinguishes us from anybody else in the entire mobile industry. Um, because I haven't seen anyone who, who has this kind of approach to hardware development or system or product development so far. Um, now, uh, as I said, um, there have been lots of delays. Um, the delays have been by hardware issues, the delays have been because of... So FIC is a Taiwanese company, we have uh, a very international team, um, and there are all kinds of uh, cultural differences, communication difficulties and so on, which all add to, to the, the postponement. So originally we were planning to have um, the, the phase one start in November last year, and we postponed it to April, and finally it happened in I think, early July. Um, and as, as I said, uh, we, we, we sold the first uh, 1,000 1, phones have been sold to developers so far. Um, 
uh, we actually we, the, the demand. I mean, even though this is only the first model, and it is a model that that will soon receive an upgrade, and the model that will not in this version be shipped to the mass market or like um, uh, be an, an end user product. Um, we we uh, lots of people are still interested in it, and so excited. So we, we sort of underestimated the the amount of uh, uh, developers that are interested in uh, at this moment. So that's why the the first one was sold out. We're running some more uh, uh, a couple of more thousand units uh, uh, through the, the, the factory right now. And uh, in September we should be able to ship uh, the development. Uh, um, when it comes to the actual software stack, um, we, what we are trying so what we are trying to do is not build yet another phone. This is boring. I mean, if you like, there's so many phones on the market, um, and just making another phone and trying to copy what everyone else does is it, very boring, and it's not an interesting thing to do. If you look at the the, the top uh, mobile manufacturers. Apart from Nokia, none of them makes money. Samsung loses money, Motorola loses money, they all lose money. So they need to build the business. So what we are looking for is very, um, I mean, if you look at it, it's